<laughs> Welcome to Power Kid. We're so glad that you tuned in today because we got some good things to tell you about God's word and about the rock of compassion. Amen. So let's pray. Amen. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that you've done for us. We will rejoice and be glad in this day that we have to learn more about you, about your Holy Spirit, and how to please you. Amen. My name is Mary Stringer, and this is Pauline <laughs> Larson. Thank you for watching today. Yes, we're really glad that you tuned in. Now we're going to go over the rules. Yes, we have rules, but only two. And the first one is we ask you to stay seated because if you're moving around doing different things, you're going to miss out on some neat stuff. Secondly, you must have fun. We take that seriously. We serve a fun God, and we have a lot of fun doing the show, and we hope you have fun watching it. So now we're going to do the pledge, the American flag and the Christian flag. And Amen. Mary's going to help us with that. Here's the American flag. We say the pledge because we honor God who established the United States of America. It was established under godly rules, mm -hmm. religious freedom, amen, freedom of speech, and good things that God wants us to have. So I want you to take your right hand, put it over your heart, and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of, America. of America and to, to the, the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, now we're going to do the pledge to the Christian flag. We want to honor our Savior. And one of the neat things that we have in America is that we are able to read our Bibles. We can, you know, have no problem with going out in public and even telling somebody about Jesus. I realize that everywhere in the world that doesn't happen. And we want to honor our Savior because of the price he paid. But so we're glad that we live in a place where we can preach the gospel and we can go to church and, and we can do those things freely. And we pray for the people watching, if that isn't true where you live, that you'll be able to have that freedom too. So in the meantime, put your hand out, put then put it over your heart and say after me, the pledge of the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. The next thing we're going to go over is four things that we need to learn about God. And this is really important because there's a lot of people who... Uh, will say to you things like, what's so special about being a Christian? Or they, they, they worship maybe different gods, or they're one of these people that thinks that, well, you know, all roads lead to God. No, they don't. We serve, we serve a God who loves us. We serve a God whose name, and the only way to get to heaven is to the Father is through Jesus, according to the Bible. And the first thing we need to learn is that God loves me. And he loves you. Isn't that amazing? We have a God that we can know that he loves us. He makes himself so real. Secondly, I have sinned. You know, sometimes people take that word like, what do you mean you're telling I'm a bad person? You don't have to be a bad person. Everybody needs a Savior. That's why Jesus had to come and die, because nobody could live the perfect life. Everybody's done things that not, maybe aren't right or they, they shouldn't do. But another definition of sin is not doing what you know you should do. And I think everybody's done that at some point in time. Or maybe God revealed something to you, you didn't get around to doing it when you should. That's still considered sin. So the thing is, we have sinned, and he's a savior. He knew he, we couldn't do it for us, so he came and died for you and me. He paid that price on the cross because in the garden with Adam and Eve, man had sinned, and Adam and Eve had sinned. And as a result, they really became the property of the devil. And because of that, the only way was to, was to pay us back and to get us back in right standing with God was for Jesus, who did not have any sin, to come and die on that cross so that we could be back in right standing with our with the father and he did that for us he even went down to hell for us no greater love i mean wow <laughs> he's an awesome god but 
we have to make a decision that we're going to live for him. And that's something that every person, when they decide they want to accept him as their Lord and Savior, well, if you accept someone as your Lord and Savior, then you need to do what they say. And the thing is, he is to be the Lord of your life. And he has told us in the word the things we're to do and not to do. But you can also know in your heart. Because when, he, when you accept him as your Lord, he comes to live in your heart. You know when something's right and when it's not. You know, you can tell. And people call it their conscience and whatever. But we need to do those things that are pleasing to him. Because when you love somebody, you want to please them. So we must decide to live for him. Those are the four things that we need to know about God. That God loves me. I have sinned. Jesus died for me. I must decide to live for him. Now we're going to go over the memory verse. And Mary has a special guest. We have Eugene. Amen. Okay, say hello to the power kids, Eugene. (laughs) I don't see no kids. No, they're watching on TV. Oh, hi, power kids. (laughs) (laughs) That's better. Okay, now we are going to say the memory verse. The memory verse! No, I will read the memory verse, and you will repeat. I will? Yes, you will. Okay. (laughs) But the helper will teach you everything. But the helper will teach you everything. This helper is the Holy Spirit. This Helper is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Who the Father will send my game. No. What? <laughs> what game? Oh, I got a new game yesterday. No, that's <laughs> not what it says. It says, the Father will send in my Amen. name. Your Sorry. name, Mary? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> it, Jesus was saying this, so he meant... In his name, in the name of Jesus. Oh, that's cool. Yes, that's too cool. And that is found... In the Bible! Yes, but where? I don't know. John 14, 26. John 14, 26. Okay, Eugene, can you look on the board behind you or the screen behind you and say it by yourself? I think I can. <laughs> Please try. But the helper will teach you everything. This helper is the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. whom the Father will send in my name. John fourteen twenty six. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Say goodbye, Eugene. Goodbye, Eugene. No. <laughs> Say goodbye, Power Kids. Yeah. Oh, goodbye, Power Kids. Thank you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Our PowerPoint, which we have one every week, is the Holy Spirit is like a Sunday school teacher who is always with you. And he lives with you. Once you accept uh, Jesus, your Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit comes to live in you, and he can show you things, and he's with you all the time. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Now we're going to, Mary's going to talk to us from the Bible. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Last week and the week before, we heard a, the same story, the same part of the book of Acts, the second chapter of Acts. And um, Jesus told them on the day of Pentecost, he mm-hmm. said, I'm leaving, but I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send you a helper. He said, wait for the helper to come. Do you know that the Holy Spirit is called the gift, the promise of the Father? That's a good, God only gives good promises. Well, they were in the upper room, and the disciples were, and even Mary, the um, mother of Jesus, and some of the other women were up there, and they all got filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Amen, with the Holy Spirit. You can call it either way, Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. And they started speaking in tongues. Now, they had tongues of fire above their head. See the the fire above everyone's head? They started speaking in languages. And um, there were people there from around the world. They could hear them speaking in their language. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Spirit is compassionate. He is 
passionate also about seeing people get saved. Amen. The Holy Spirit yeah. loves people because God loves people. The Holy Spirit is God. Amen. And so they were speaking in languages of the other um, places. And they were saying, wow, we, we got to see what's going on. And so they went and they, um, you know, could hear there was a mighty wind. And they could hear the sound of people praying in other languages. So they decided they were going to go see what was going on. And they said, wow, it's true. We hear them speaking in our mm -hmm. own languages. Aren't these peop men from Galilee? Well, you know what? God didn't want to just save the people that were Jews. He wanted to save them all. And we mm -hmm. talked about that last week, how he told Peter, get up, kill, and eat when he saw the unclean animals. But he didn't mean for Peter to kill anybody or anything. Definitely not. He meant... What I've called clean, mm -hmm. what I've called holy is clean. Do not call it unclean. And so God was helping them with their ministry because their ministry wasn't meant for just the Jews because God loves everybody. Amen. God loves everybody and he wants to see them all saved filled with the Holy Ghost and ministering to others because mm -hmm. he is a helper. He is compassionate. He is passionate about seeing people get saved. We serve an awesome God. We do. Mm -hmm. And Peter preached to, we told you this last time, 3,000 people got saved. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost helped pe Peter. He mm -hmm. was coaching him. He was helping him saying, this is how you do it. This is how you do it, Peter. Do this. Do that. And that's what he wants to do for you. Amen. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. All right. Now, see that sailboat? That looks like fun, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, you notice when the when, uh, sailboat is sailing, it leans over to the side. They call it, it keels over. And that's because the sails are what drive the sailboat, some of them have a motor, but mostly the sailboat, the wind, the sails fill up with wind. And, you know, it's like the Holy Spirit that reminds us uh, we need to be led by the Spirit. And, and if you remember in Genesis, it talked about how the Spirit moved and then God said. In other words, the Spirit moved. And we need to be led by the Spirit just like that sailboat is being led and directed by the wind. And, of course, the Holy Spirit has been compared to wind. He's compared to many things. He's compared to a dove that's very gentle with, with very quiet eyes. And, and, and he's compared to fire. And he's compared to many things. But the wind, just like an eagle, when an eagle goes to fly, it waits for the wind to pick it up and lift it. And so we need to wait on the Holy Spirit. And when we hear from him, then we go ahead and do things. And sometimes we have a, a, a feeling in us, like an unction in us, where um, an impression, some people call it, where we feel like, Mm, we should do something or a witness or maybe not. It's kind of a scratchy feeling. And the thing is, it's real important, just like a sailboat. A sailboat doesn't go from here to here. The sailboat, what they call tacks, it goes this way and zigzags kind of with the wind, letting the wind direct it and carry it. And sometimes the, the Holy Spirit will direct us in a way, too, that we go, well, I don't know I'm going this way, but, but he does. God knows and he directs us in a way because he knows where he wants us to go and where it's good for us to go. And that's why we need to follow his leadings. All right. Um, Mary is going to talk to us next. Okay. I have a baseball bat and I have some baseball cards. I and don't even know coach. if they <laughs> still do baseball cards. Yes, and this is a coach. And, um, you know, every sport, has diff has a coach they don't learn this all on their own most mm -hmm. people you know 99.999 percent of the people <laughs> are not going to coach themselves you no. can't really coach yourselves i don't even know if baseball cards are you know popular anymore these are old they're probably collector's items but Everybody has a differing opinion on which team is the best and which baseball player is the best, right? Everybody has their favorite. But I guarantee 
Your favorite player did not do it on his own. He had a coach, and he had a good coach if he's a very good baseball player. I just went ABC. I got A's, Angels, Astros, Blue mm -hmm. Jays, Cardinals, Cubs, and this one's just a couple, um, American League and National League, I guess is what that stands for. And then these cards say home run leaders, the giant, Greg Nettles from the Yankees. Like I said, they're old. Mike Schmidt from the Phillies. Victory leaders. These were good players. Jim Palmer from the Orioles. Randy Jones from the Padres. Yeah, and these are earned run average leaders. I can't even say his last name. Mark Fidrich from the Tigers and John Denny from the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. They're probably retired now. <laughs> and strikeout leaders. So pitchers. Nolan Ryland. Everyone's heard of Nolan Ryan. Mm -hmm. Angels and Tom Seaver, the Mets. Mm -hmm. Runs batted in, L in leaders, those who batted people in. Lee Mays and the Orioles, George Foster and the Reds. All these guys had a coach. Guess what? They joined a team. Yeah, they go for the best guys and they trade people. Well, guess what? We joined a team when we made Jesus our Lord and Savior. Yeah. Do you want to be one of the best in that team? You let the Holy Ghost coach you. Amen. You listen to him. It's not enough just to, you know, pay your tithes, sing in the choir, you know, do this and do that. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. That's right. God calls him a helper. We need a helper, especially now in these days. We need to pray in the Holy Spirit. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit so that we can be the most valuable prayer, <laughs> the most valuable player. We need the Holy Spirit. If you want to be the best of the best, Listen to the Holy Spirit. Let him coach you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes, absolutely. Well, today we have a story, and it's from the quarry again. And we have a, a <coughs> this quarry was well known, very well known. And in fact, it was so well known that Carlton came from England to join it. He had heard such wonderful things about this quarry. And he thought, oh, he was really excited. And he came to the quarry, and guess what? They hardly talk to him. In fact, they just really seem kind of rude and extremely unfriendly. And he was like, I came all the way to America from England. And here I am. These people are just, or these blocks are just so unfriendly. Well, then there was one called Oral Rockets. And he, he knew that Carlton needed he needed some uh, encouragement. So he went over and he was friendly to him. And so then uh, Carlton was showing him pictures and things about his family. And he said he was just a friend to him and he made him feel wanted. You know, the Holy Spirit, sometimes you can feel so alone. You can be in a crowd of people and feel very lonely. But when you know the Holy Spirit, he can, you know, he's a brother, six closer than a brother. And he can be your constant companion. He's my best friend. You know, I love my husband. My husband's wonderful, and, and he loves me. But the Holy Spirit is both our best friend, and then we have each other, of course. But after that, um, he started hanging out with, with him. Sorry. All right. And Carlin saw this big, long part where it was kind of a long pile in the quarry. He said, that looks like fun. Let's go fall down and roll down. And that'll be a lot of fun. But Oral said to him, uh, that's not a good idea because you're being prepared for a purpose. And if you roll down those things, you could get damaged. Because, see, he was being considered to be one of the blocks that would make the foundation of the skyscraper in New York City. And so he was trying to tell him, yeah, that's fun, but it's really not a good idea. God has bigger plans for you than that. He listened to him and he thought, you know, you're really right. Well, the next thing that happened was um, Carlton got kind of sad. He missed his family. You know, he was a long way away. He was across the ocean from uh, his family in England. And he was really sad. In fact, he was kind of a little teary-eyed. And Oral saw that. And Oral went and bought him an ice cream cone. 
He just wanted to be an encouragement to him. And you know, the Holy Spirit is an encouragement to us. Just like, he, you know, the Holy Spirit, like uh, Earl told him not to roll down that hill because he could be damaged. The Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit will show us things, not to do things that might be damaging to us. But he's also an encouragement to us. It's amazing. Or he br helps bring people around who will encourage us. Well, then... They were uh, all coming together, and, and, and he heard that they had a relay race, Carlton did. And he thought, man, I'd like to do that, but I don't think I've ever raced or done anything. I don't know how. Um, and so Oral said to him, here's a, here's a button. You know, we call ourselves power kids. Well, it was a power button, he says. And he was reminding him he could do all things, you know, through Jesus Christ. And, and he gave him that power button. And he said, you go for it. He encouraged him to try to be all he could be. So sure enough, uh, Carlton went, he ran, he wore his button, and he won the race. Oh, he was excited. That was one of the happiest days of his life. He won that race, and he was just so excited. But you know what? <laughs> Sometimes when God promotes you and good things happen, everybody else isn't that excited. And they were not excited. And they were really kind of mean. And they said really rude things like, wow, you're different from us. You're just kind of a blah, blah, blah. And why do you think you're so special? And you know what? Carlton got mad. He got really angry. He was so mad. He said, I hate those people. I hate those blocks. Well, that's not really right either. So he thought, I'm going to go talk to Oral. Oral will understand. So he went to talk to Oral, and he was trying to get him to sympathize that those, they were so mean, and, and it was so unfair. You, but you know what Oral did? Oral said, no, it's never right to hate anybody. You know, and in our country, and even in the world, there's a lot of people that hate people and feel justified in doing mean things, but you're not. The Holy Spirit would never lead you to do that. The Holy Spirit wants you to be kind to people. And, you know, you don't make things right for yourself. You can pray for you. It says to pray for those who uh, despitefully use you and who are mean. But you don't go try to, to get revenge. That's not God. So then he kind of, he repented and he says, okay, I'm sorry. I forgive them. You know, I don't care what anybody's done to you. You forgive them. Well, they murdered my brother or my sister. You still forgive them. And I'll tell you what, when you don't forgive somebody, it's like drinking poison and hoping it kills the other person. Unforgiveness it will stop the blessings of God, and it'll eventually kill you. It'll work in your body. So let it go. And the Holy Spirit's good about helping this and, and reminding us that we need to do this. Well, he continued, Carlton continued to grow and to learn the things of, that he needed to learn. And sure enough, the day came when they decided to pick him. They needed the fifth block to pick for this, to go in this foundation. And he was the one. And he didn't really want to leave his friend Oral. But Oral said, you know what? You can contact me. I'll still be there. And I'll still be praying for you. And, and I'm still, you know, even though we're separated by a distance, I'm still there for you. And that's just like the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you can't see him or he feels distant. You know, sometimes when you're going through a test, uh, like when you're taking a test in school, the teacher doesn't talk to you because you're taking a test. But when you're done, he does. And sometimes it seems that the Holy Spirit, you might say, well, I don't know and I haven't heard. Well, you're taking a test. And just, just, just do what you're supposed to do and keep praying and talking to him. And he has not left you. He's there for you. He's going to say, the Bible says he's going to stay with us. Isn't that wonderful? We can have a friend that sticks like that. Now, let me ask you this. Maybe you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because first you have to accept Jesus. And the Holy Spirit it will lead on your heart that you need to accept Jesus. And once you accept Jesus, then uh, the Holy Spirit it comes to live inside of you. And there's also the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is the evidence of praying in tongues. And that's for another lesson. We'll talk about that. But if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is a good opportunity to do so. And what you, let me ask you this. If you die today, do you know if you go to heaven? You say, well, how can I know? Or you might say, well, I'm a really good person. I think so. No, you don't think so. The Bible says uh, in Romans 10, uh, 9 and 10 it says it talks about if you'll believe in your heart and say with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead you'll be saved 
And the Bible also says in Romans 10, 13, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yours, whosoever. Of course you are. Um, so if you want to receive Jesus now, let's say this prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. Jesus, I do believe that God raised you from the dead. I believe with my heart, and I'm saying it with my mouth. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now, there's a prayer language that you can have, and you can ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. Amen. And we're going to talk probably more about that in another lesson, but he's available. And sometimes when people accept Jesus, you just automatically feel like these words coming up. They won't be in your head. They'll be in your heart. And you can just begin to speak them out. And you have a prayer language. And that's like a hotline to God that nobody can understand like the devil. And you, and you are praying out the perfect will of God. Amen? Amen. Anyway, Mary has something for you now. Amen. Para los niños, jóvenes, adultos que hablan español, ¿sabes qué? La Biblia dice en Romanos 10, 13. Porque todo aquel que invocare el nombre del Señor será salvo. ¿Por qué? Bueno, la Biblia dice, porque con el corazón se cree para justicia, pero con la boca se confiesa para salvación. Entonces, vamos a orar, vamos a confesar para recibir a Jesucristo. Amén. Repita conmigo, Señor Jesús, creo en ti. Eres el Hijo de Dios. Pagaste el precio por mis pecados al ser crucificado. Creo en tu sacrificio de amor. Me arrepiento de todos mis pecados y te pido perdón. Gracias, Jesús, por perdonarme y darme la vida eterna. Amén. Si, or, si has orado esta Amen. simple oración, queremos saber, por favor, que nos mande una carta a 2222 Avenida L. Galveston, Texas, 77550, porque queremos mandar algo a ti. Hmm.